Hi everybody. This is something that I don't talk about too often because it's something that I'm still working on. But this is what you would call an ancestral altar. And everybody does theirs differently. Different people use um, different regional uh, methods. So, for example, if you're, I don't know, Norwegian, you use Norwegian elements. If you're uh, British, you can use British elements. If you, if, you know, you, you trace back what you connect with, or even better, what you remember your forefathers to have connected with um, culturally, regionally, and more specifically spiritually, to better connect with the essence of their spirits. Um, there's lots and lots of debate on how this functions, and there's debate on whether or not this is even worth doing. But every time I've sat in front of this altar, as mishmashed as it is, I've felt a pretty close connection. And it's been a very fulfilling, calming, and I guess you could say light connection. Because in my experience, the, the, the energies that I'm talking to when I'm sitting in front of this altar, or in this space rather, um, are, it seems kind of like elevated. You know, they, they've been through some stuff. They know some stuff and they've learned some things, you know. They've kind of surpassed this uh, bondage of this mortal world and, and they've kind of advanced to a higher level. And um, when they find it necessary, or rather when I ask them, they tend to imbue me with some knowledge. And I usually receive that knowledge intuitively through dreams or through divination. Now, like I said, mine is set up very mishmash. I've taken some from Boveda. I've taken some from setting up a bo an Espiritismo Boveda. I've taken some from pagan altars. I've taken some from Catholicism. It, it, it all just kind of flowed for me. So everything on this altar that I'm going to show you has a major significance to me. And I would grow it, but I kind of intuitively feel that there's no need to, that I have all the elements on here so far that I need. And if I add more, it's because I'm going to stumble upon them um, to better connect. They're, in my experience, they're not very gung-ho on the materialistic things as you would put on other altars where the spirits are very demanding of material things. They don't really ask for much. They ask for a cup of water, maybe a cup of coffee, maybe, uh, uh, maybe a cigarette or something, and light, white light. But what they want more than anything are prayers, and they want you to have your spirit very elevated, high vibrational. That seems to be, in my experience, what they want. They want you to have a higher knowledge and to empower yourself. And they want you to let go of all of the uh, things that are binding you to this animalistic state that we catch ourselves in. They want us to be very um, open to love and open to brotherhood and acceptance. That tends, tends to be the theme with them. So let me turn this camera around and I'll show you what I have on here. So this right here, this liner was my grandmother's. Okay. This was also my grandmother's. I don't know if she made it or if she bought it. And this cup was bought specific for veneration or veneration methods for veneration purposes. Sorry. Um, matches for the candle book of Psalms or, um, Psalm Proverbs, very important because there's very, there's lots of hidden messages in here, guys, that I rely on at least weekly to get me through the week or to get me through at least that day. These are 
Spanish playing cards. And the reason I have Spanish playing cards on here is because one, I'm trying to learn them, and two, um, I'm Spanish <laughs> and uh, also Portuguese as well as French. And they had a very huge role in uh, those parts of the world at a, at a specific time and uh, prior to the colonization and such, even after. So I have one of these books that interprets this, these cards in English and in Spanish. And before I get any slack, I know that those are probably not the right interpretations. But, you know, at this point in the game, um, this is just kind of meant for them. Their message between me and them and my learning of the cards is kind of like a, a, a side project. So I also have the oldest tarot deck that I that I've had. I've had this since oh maybe 2006 and it's the Tarot of the Dead and it's all skeletal images and stuff like that. Oddly enough, they seem to really enjoy it. And so um I will use Psalms, the Spanish deck and the tarot to communicate uh any kind of message they want to give me. Um this was my grandmother's and it's um a relief i think that's what you call it a relief of jesus and this right here i believe is a gypsy woman spanish gypsy more specifically or maybe not spanish i'm not sure but i found it in a antique shop and i had to have it because we had a lot of spanish gypsies in my lineage so once again these like i said there's certain elements taken from Espiritismo, I believe, or, or or Espiritismo Cruzado. I'm not well versed in it and anything like that. All I know is that seem to it, it seems to help me connect to them. Um, this uh, sliding off the table, but this skeletal image right here it may look kind of scary, but guys, we're all skeletons underneath our skin. Um, I created. Because I once saw Santa Muerte in a nun habit with a flower crown on her. And I had this on my Santa Muerte altar, but something just didn't seem to fit right. And as soon as I put it on here, it, it just I just got a feeling of comfort, I guess. Like I got affirmation that it was supposed to be here. So this was a rosary sent from a very, very nice lady that I do not want to damage and not want anything bad to happen to because it's it's made of very, very um, luxurious beads. So I put it around her neck as well as this pendant. Um, and also my parents, my, my family get mad at me if they saw this, but uh, these were my grandmothers. And this was my grandmother's and I'm not putting them on here as a sign of disrespect quite the opposite um this bracelet it's got Santa Muerte on it with a cross and the knots um I'm not putting it on there as a sign of disrespect this was originally a Santa Muerte figure but it transitioned into an ancestral figure a lot of my ancestry is Catholic so what better to depict that than the nun you know so even though that's not commonplace, it kind of created that transition for me and it seems to fit. And I'll come in here and I'll kiss it on the forehead and I'll talk to it like, you know, like I'll talk to her and this altar. Like to me, this plastic skeleton has essence of my, my, my blood. You know, I... When I set this altar up, I imbued it with that essence. And it may not make sense to many people, but it does for me. And this little lady right here is kind of like a an assistant in a way. They all have their essences in them, their spiritual energies in them. And I can feel it whenever I get close to them. The fan is also representative of the gypsies. Um... I would place more things of my lineage on here, but that's what I connect most with. Um, up here, I also have a little jar with a uh, rosary in it. And today marks first day that I've actually just kind of sat aside and uh, impromptu prayed a regular rosary. Normally I'll do the Santa Muerte rosary. But um, yeah, and so down here there's just, you know, items 
like selected book of prayers and uh, some Bibles that were my grandmother's, uh, books of prayers that were my grandmother's, and uh, I hold them very dear. And I'm when I have them here, you know, I'm I'm paying homage to to my my deceased and paying homage to my family and to the lineage that came before them. And I'm telling you, almost nine times out of ten, whenever I'm asking for advice, the tarot cards I'll do a ten card layout. The Spanish cards, I'll pull one card, and I'll ask for a page number, intuitively, in the book of Psalms, and each one, I I am not even joking, will directly answer whatever questions I had, more specifically than anything I've ever experienced before. So, look at that light flickering. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you guys. You, if you're watching this and you're interested in this, just go online and kind of browse around ancestral altars. It's, it's a very personal thing. You know, um, one way that you'll see a more popular ancestral altar is the Day of the Dead. The, um, the altars with, with nothing but pictures. That is their way of paying homage to their forefathers. This is mine, and I would like to expand, but at the same time, um, I have another area in the house that has nothing but the pictures. So, yeah, this is for my own personal, um, my own personal prayer area, you know, and stuff like that. And I also kind of believe this notion that if I'm setting up a, an altar with a bunch of pictures, I feel like I'm bogging them down. I feel like I'm holding them too close to this earth and, and I'm, because I'm calling on their energy, I'm not allowing them to graduate to the next level. If that makes sense, um, it just kind of makes sense to me uh, that not to give them hefty amounts of food and hefty amounts of of items that would bog them down to this earth because they got things they got to do, you know? Um, I feel like when I'm sitting here, I'm working with their imprint, I guess, with their essence rather than their full on spirit. I feel like, like a heat print, like when you leave a, a handprint somewhere and it leaves behind a heat print, I feel like I'm working with that heat print. It's still got memory. It's still got intelligence, but at the same time, it's not the full essence. I mean, I know that also that may take away from what people, uh, from, from, from people that would normally venerate their ancestors, but my ancestors don't want me to venerate them. They, they didn't even know about me, you know, like, it's not like they planned me or anything. All I'm doing is showing appreciation and asking for a little bit of guidance, you know, even if even if I'm asking a recording <laughs> and that sounds dumb and I might piss off a few people, especially lots of pagans, but, um, that's just how I see it. And with spirituality, there are no set rules since it's not religion. So it makes sense to me. It works for me. I don't know the answers to everything. And this is just how I conduct every Sunday. Yeah. Every Sunday they help me out. And I just give them light and water. That's that's really all they want. They want acknowledgement, light, and water. And some they want me to pray to them. Pray for them, rather. Not to them. Pray for them. Recite prayers for them. From the book of Psalms. that From that uh, collection of Psalms. Pro, pro, proverbs. So, yeah. So I made a joke on Facebook the other day. You see the, the feet right here? So I, I sleep over here and I said... This is the first thing I see in the morning, the feet. <laughs> but this this spirit right here, she's very motherly but firm. And she's like, okay, no BS. Let's, let's get down to business. This is how you've been screwing up. So I'm going to give you the right advice. That's the essence I get from her. But it's like, no, 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 honey. I don't want nothing from you. I just want to help you. That's what I get from this one from this one she's kind of quiet um she's kind of like a watcher i guess like facilitates in the background you know
But these cards, they speak really loud. And that candle talks in itself. And, you know, that's all I can ask for. They're giving me more than I could ever ask for. So that's about it, guys. Just wanted to share that with you. I hope everybody's staying safe. And I hope that you all are receiving what you need. And, um, you know, uh, I'm, I am praying for everybody. I really do mean that. I'm not just saying that. And um, I hope we all make it through this unscathed to the best of our ability. You know what to do. That's actually one of the, in the book of Psalms is one of the things I was told today is you know exactly what to do. So don't act like you don't. And don't act irrational. Act with logic. Because you know exactly what to expect. That's the message I got for today. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.